Hello, welcome to Nursing with Professor B. My name is Bridget. I have a master's degree in nursing education. I'm also a family nurse practitioner. In today's video, I will be covering what is the difference between the Samoji effect and the Dawn phenomenon. All right, so if you want to learn the difference between these, I will make it super easy so that you never forget. But first, make sure you hit the like button, make sure that you subscribe, and make sure you turn on that notification bell. Let's go. The Samoji effect versus the dawn phenomenon. Doesn't that just roll off the tongue? It's, like, it's kind of fun to say. Yeah. Anyways, let's get this party started. So what are the similarities between both, both of these, between the Samoji and the dawn phenomenon, right? They both have elevated blood glucose when their blood glucose is checked in the morning. So you're going to see an elevated blood glucose here. You see a 288. Now, the reason why this is important is because what we do, interventions, recommendations to the provider, and how we treat it is different. With the Samoji effect, it's more common in type 1 diabetes. Hyperglycemia in the morning may be due to the Samoji effect. A high dose of insulin produces a decline in blood glucose levels during the night. And again, I'm going to make this crystal clear to you. What, what occurs is they got a high dose of insulin maybe at bedtime and then their blood sugar crashes. So the body, remember, our body's job is to keep us alive at all at all costs, right? So if it crashes, the body's like, oh, 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 mayday, mayday, we're going down, we're going down. Then they release a surge of hormones to try to counteract the effects to raise that blood sugar. But our body does a little bit too good of a job, and all of a sudden, shoom, it takes off. So as a result, Counter-regulatory hormones such as glucagon, epinephrine, growth hormone, and cortisol are released, which produces rebound hyperglycemia. The danger of this effect is that when blood glucose levels are measured in the morning, hyperglycemia is present, right? We just saw that 288 on the um, glucometer. And the patient or the healthcare provider may increase the insulin dose, which is not the answer because it was actually too much insulin which caused the body to crash and then for it to rebound. If a patient is experiencing morning hyperglycemia, checking blood glucose levels between 2 and 4 a.m. for hypoglycemia will help determine if the cause is the Samoji effect. The patient may report headaches on awakening. Remember, uh, symptoms of hypoglycemia is colds and clammy, need some candy. The patient may report headaches on awakening and recall having night sweats or nightmares. A bedtime snack, a reduction in the dose of insulin, or both can help prevent the Samoji effect. This is a visual of what happens with the Samoji effect, right? So this person, it, their blood glucose is up here, they get a high dose of insulin, and then they crash at like 2 to 4 in the morning, and then their body produces a surge of counter-regulatory hormones, and the blood glucose skyrockets. But it, this drop is the Samoji effect versus in the Dawn phenomenon, which we're going to see, this drop does not happen. So essentially, the Samoji effect leads to high blood glucose levels in people with diabetes. It happens when low blood sugar triggers a rebound effect. If a person notices high blood glucose levels in the morning, the Samoji effect may be responsible, but the rise could have resulted also from the Dawn phenomenon. Distinguishing between the Samoji effect and the Dawn phenomenon is important because it may indicate that a person needs to adjust their treatment plan. The Samoji effect is actually named after Michael Samoji, which was a Hungarian-American researcher who first described it. You will not be tested on that. That's just a little bit of trivia. And the Samoji effect essentially happens when the body's defenses respond to long periods of low blood sugar. And this can occur when a person exercises a lot, goes a long time without a snack, or takes more insulin before bed than they need. Insulin reduces the amount of glucose in the blood. If glucose levels fall too far, low blood sugar results, and the medical term for low blood sugar, of course, is hypoglycemia. Hypoglycemia then puts stress on the body, and this triggers the release of the counter-regulatory hormones, and these include what we said already, the cortisol, epinephrine, adrenaline, growth hormone, glucagon. And then what happens is that glucagon triggers the liver to convert stores of glycogen into glucose, and this can cause blood glucose levels to rebound high. 
Those symptoms of the Samoji effect start with high blood glucose levels upon waking that do not respond to increased insulin doses. The symptoms also include low blood glucose levels at 2 to 3. Um, other symptoms could be night sweats, a rapid heart rate, which is tachycardia, waking up with a headache, blurred vision, confusion, dizziness, dry mouth, fatigue, increased appetite, and thirst. Then when they crash at 2 and 4 in the morning, eventually, what if they go into a hypoglycemic coma because they are on too much insulin? So it's very important that you know that you're able to distinguish between these two and to provide the appropriate recommendations to the patient or to the provider. For example, if you're an overnight nurse, you could check and the patient is admitted to your unit, you could check their blood glucose at between 2 and 4 in the morning and then report back to the physician like, hey, this was the blood glucose level at this time at bedtime. We need to decrease the bedtime insulin dose. So the dawn phenomenon is characterized by hyperglycemia, high blood glucose, that is present upon awakening. Two counter-regulatory hormones, growth hormone and cortisol, which are excreted in increased amounts in the early morning hours, may be the cause of this phenomenon. The dawn phenomenon affects a majority of people with diabetes and tends to be more severe when growth hormone is at its peak in adolescence and young adulthood. Normally, you will not be tested on this in nursing school. What you will be tested on is what is what are the interventions? What is the difference between the Samoji and the Dawn effect? Careful assessment is required to document the Samoji effect or Dawn phenomenon because the treatment for each differs. The treatment for the treatment for Samoji effect is less insulin in the evening. Right here, big point. So the Dawn phenomenon is also called the Dawn effect. And it's the term used to describe an abnormal early morning blood glucose, usually between 2 and 8 in the morning in people with diabetes. Some researchers believe that natural overnight release of the so-called counter-regulatory hormones, including growth hormone, cortisol, glucagon, and epinephrine, increases insulin resistance, causing blood sugar to rise. High blood glucose may also be caused by insufficient insulin the night before, insufficient anti-diabetic medication dosages, or a carb snack consumption before bedtime. So remember with the Samoji, we had the crash. Think of dawn, right? The sun rises. The sun rises in the dawn. The sun does not dip down and go back up. It's not a yo-yo, right? The Samoji effect is like a yo-yo. Another way to remember the Samoji effect is the fact that I just thought of this right now. Samoji has a Y in it and it goes like a yo-yo. So yo-yo, right? It goes down and back up. Whereas the dawn, the sun rises. And um, that's exactly what it looks like, right? The sun rising, it just steadily climbs until you check their blood glucose. It steadily climbs all night. And that is the dawn phenomenon, right? The sun rises. Here's the dawn. Dawn. It just rises up. There's no dip. There's no dip like that Christina Million song that came out a long time ago. Like, dip below, break it down slow. I don't know. I remember it. <laughs> Anyways, okay, treatment interventions. The treatment for dawn phenomenon is an increase in insulin or an adjustment in administration time. Your assessment must include insulin dose, injection sites, etc. Also making sure that they're injecting in the right places because if they're injecting in the same area, they can get uh, lipodystrophy and essentially their insulin will not be absorbed. That's basically that they just create this little fat pocket that doesn't absorb insulin. It's This one A is lipohypertrophy. Do you see this excess fat that has surrounded here and then if they're injecting in the same site constantly over and over and over again the insulin will not be absorbed through this because it almost creates like this pocket of scar tissue scar fatty tissue so ask the patient to measure their glucose at bedtime nighttime between two and four in the morning and fasting blood glucose levels on several occasions and for the samoji effect if blood glucose levels between two and four in the morning are less than 60 milligrams per deciliter and signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia are present, the insulin dosage should be reduced. The dawn phenomenon. If blood glucose between 2 and 4 in the morning is high, the insulin dosage should be increased. In addition, counsel the patient on appropriate bedtime snacks. So again, if it's crashing down in the middle of the night, then it kind of makes sense that we have to actually decrease the insulin the day before. That's the Samoji effect. It has a Y in it. It yo-yos down. The dawn sun rises, 
If their blood glucose just steadily rises all night, you take their blood glucose at two in the four in the morning and it's like 400 and then they wake up and it's 600. Clearly, we need to increase their insulin. So in conclusion, like I just said, with the Samoji effect, nocturnal hypoglycemia develops, stimulating a surge of counter-regulatory hormones, which raises blood sugar. Note that the patient is hypoglycemic between two and four in the morning, but rebounds with an elevated blood glucose at 7 a.m. Treatment, reduce the bedtime dose of insulin. Dawn phenomenon, results when tissue becomes desensitized to insulin nocturnally. Note the blood glucose becomes progressively elevated throughout the night, resulting in elevated blood glucose at 7 a.m. Treatment, add or increase the bedtime dose of insulin. Thank you so much for watching. If you want a copy of this PowerPoint, then email nursingwithprofessorb at gmail.com. Send me a screenshot that you subscribe to my channel, and then I will send you the copy of the PowerPoint. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, and make sure you turn on that notification bell.